Hello YouTube, my name is Agent Omega and I do things. Welcome to the first episode of my new series set in TNP Limitless 7. This, technically speaking, is an SMP in that it is hosted on my personal server, which is not sponsored, but just a shout out to Unraid, the operating system that I'm using to host, and B, Crafty, the software that I'm using to create the server instance specifically. And I picked this pack by finding a bunch of different mods that I was particularly interested in. I knew I wanted Create, I knew I wanted Steam and Rails, Applied Energistics, and a surprise, a delightful one, Silence Gems. And without much talking, I believe we are starting to come up on daytime in the server. So I am going to go ahead and get connected. As you can see, I've already entered the server details on my multiplayer screen. Click. And we should connect just before the sun breaks. So this could be potentially really dangerous, but fingers crossed, nothing bad happens. Now this is my first time seeing this server though I did set Dynemap up on it, so that's how I knew what time of day it's going to be. And the other thing of note is that this is going to be the first series, theoretically, that I'm recording entirely on Linux. Recording, but editing is still going to be done on Windows until I figure out a good solution for that as well. Aha, there we go. After just a little bit of waiting there, we are finally at spawn and this is gorgeous I was not expecting falling petals and any of that good stuff now from creative mode I happen to know that we are holding the quest book right now and if I open it up we have a readme I've already gone through this a little bit and I'm going to be setting up my own party but probably not right this second right now I know there are more important things which is to click on the main thing here and we do have access to Oh, no, we don't have access to that. Okay. I might potentially enable these because I do intend to have some friends and or family on the server, and these are really useful. Um, so that that's some configuration stuff that I might do off camera. But as you can see that we have quests much like uh, Create Above and Beyond. In fact, it uses, you know, FTP quests as the library. So you may be very familiar with this particular interface. And do 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 do. Quests usually have loot bundles. Hmm. Alright, well, that's a little bit concerning, but now you can see that we've got a whole bunch of stuff. And if I just exit out of here, we have. Ooh. Lag opening the inventory there. We have Limitless Sword. Which. Oh! Oh, these, these have sockets. I don't know if this is going to be like Diablo or Final Fantasy. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple of apples to tide us over. We have a backpack and this, the Eccentric Tome. This is very much like the Akashic Tome or Akashic Tome. I'm genuinely not sure how you pronounce that, but it, this is like the spiritual successor to that mod where you have all of your books in one book. And they've done us the favor of putting every single book we're going to need into this one book. And we'll definitely be going into that much later. But for now, I don't want to be doing anything at spawn. Including... Oh, Botania's in here too! Yours! I did not know that. So, like, I've been going through the mod lists and I happen to have skipped directly over that. But that's fantastic. Because we didn't actually get far enough for that in Vault Hunters. So, I am... Ooh. Oh, and wild puffy plants. Yes, I know that these are used to make... I'm actually not entirely sure, because it uh, it's going to be different in this version than Horizons 3. But in the original, I believe it was used to make, like, cotton or something that you needed for tools and stuff. Oh, I see a villager over there. Gishel Green! There are chocobos in here? Yo! That's amazing! All right. Yeah, we're definitely going to be picking up some chocobos. Tell you what. Oh, no! I meant to... Mm, I meant to mark spawn. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut down some wood because I know we're going to need it. You know, I don't know why I thought this was the kind of 
tree that... Oh? But do we have... We've got vein mining. We've got vein mining from the get-go. Let's go. Heck yeah. Oh, this is amazing. And I'm sure we've got fast leaf decay. Yes, we do. All right, that's pretty heckin' sweet. Now the question is, which direction do I want to go from spawn? Because there's more than just... I don't know. It's hard to put into words. I want to find some place that speaks to me. Because this is going to be a multiplayer server, as usual, I didn't quite manage to finish the thought here because I got distracted by something in-game. But basically what I'm driving at is that on a multiplayer server, you have to consider where everybody else is potentially going to want to go. And I have sort of a prime directive style approach to the game when I'm the one, especially if I'm the one hosting the server. I don't want to stifle anyone by settling too close to spawn and basically influencing their decisions in a way that wouldn't necessarily happen if I just go abroad. And moreover, if anybody wants to settle close to me and, you know, try to engage or do some collaborative stuff, then they can do that of their own volition. I'm basically not forcing the choice upon them. That's more or less what I'm getting at. And then the second component is, whereas in Vault Hunters, I just sort of settled exactly where I was, because like I said, I, I settled close to spawn. I made do with the terrain that was there, and I made something out of that. In a multiplayer, I want to find something that inspires me. And that's going to take quite a bit of time, as we're going to find out in the rest of this video. But let's just skip ahead to some more interesting stuff. Oh! Oh, and we've got um, Spice of Life in this pack. And I'm guessing this is the Carrot Edition and not the Stick Edition? Yeah, that's cool. Let's check what quest stuff we... Oh my god, that's a lot of quests. Alright. So I've already done Punch Tree Get Wood. Let's grab our free apple, I suppose. Botania, wow, I am loving this quest system, because it's clear that unlike in um, Create Above and Beyond, there isn't, like, this isn't narrowing you towards a specific goal, it's more just, hey, this is how the mod progresses, and I realize that, sure, uh, Create Above and Beyond kinda does that too, but... Ooh, that is so cool. All right, I probably shouldn't have done that until I was ready to uh, do something with that level, but whatever. Oh, skeleton man. Oh, and you can tell that I'm still very used to Vault Hunters because A, I'm expecting not to take as much damage as I am, and B, uh, I almost reflexively pushed R just there. So I'm going to have to unlearn that muscle memory and relearn new muscle memory as we figure out what the controls are in this pack. Oh god, what is that? Oh, is that an embers golem? Wait, is embers in this pack? It is! Oh! Oh man, this is basically Horizons 3. Bro! This is amazing! Oop. Oh, that's fantastic! Oh, I'm gonna love getting into Embers! Okay, so for those who are not in the know, uh, Embers is this really cool tech mod that was just a proof of concept back in 1.13, I think. Or rather, even that was kind of a remake of uh, an earlier version of the Embers mod, I think. And the whole thing is, it's a tech mod, but it's dwarven. You know, it's dwarven tech. And... At least in the 1.13 version, you went down to Bedrock, and you basically extracted this Ember Ore stuff? Oh, Zombie Brute, what the heck? Oh, okay, so... There are definitely... Can that zombie... He Wait, is that zombie just throwing flesh? Hold on, I'm gonna get in the water, because I don't think it's gonna be able to do quite as much to me in here. And then I'm gonna eat and heal up. Yeah, okay, that's terrifying, though. Ow! That's terrifying! 
here. Okay, so I'm realizing that nighttime is far more dangerous than it usually is. Because A, it seems like zombies have a much bigger detection radius, and B, there are varieties of enemies, and that's terrifying. And again, I also wasn't expecting the embers stuff, because, oh, oh this is so cool! Oh, this is so cool! <gasps> that's a chocobo! Quick, way! Oh, chocobo! Oh, they even quay! Oh, this is so cute! Uh huh! Uh, can I, can I ride you? Do I, do I have to feed you Gishel Greens, or can I feed you, hold on. Oh, it's named Yuffie. Oh, it's mine. It's my chocobo now. Oh, that's so cute. We have a chocobo. Okay. All right, come on, Cocobo. We're going to head, oh, we're going to head away from the evil mean Spider-Man. Is this a sheep? It's a sheep. Um, the problem is... Oh, wait, there's a little hut thing over there. Wait, where's my Kokobo? Oh! Oh! Okay, we head for safety and hope that the Chocobo is fine. Whoa! Oh, God. What? Oh! Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, I have done something terrifying. Uh, okay. They can summon bad guys. What the heck? Do not want... I guess this is what happens if you stay in one place too long at night. They just start summoning each other, and then the game is up. Oh, that was heckin' terrifying. That is easily to, like, try and catch out AFK players, but I am not AFK. Ooh, Wandering Traitor. Wait, ow! What? No, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't... I am so far away. I am so far away. Let's go. Okay. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, so very far away, I'm going to have to make another boat. Okay, now the thing is, I want two things from over there. I want my grave, and I want my chocobo. And if I can do both of those things then we are looking pretty good. And I think, moreover, if I get my chocobo in a boat, I can take it wherever I want to go. I honestly wasn't expecting to die quite so soon, and yet that's because I'm coming off of a series where I was practically invulnerable in the overworld. That's what power creep does to somebody. I hope my chocobo survived. Like, it was named, too. I mean, sure, it was named by the mod itself, Yep, okay, this is definitely my chocobo. The question is, do I need a saddle? And also, why is my thing not displaying correctly? Um, can I just... Okay, healthful. Oh, oh, that's probably what you need to breed them. Yeah, okay, I'm picking up where they're putting down. Um, okay, get in my boat. Can you get in my boat? Can you get my boat? I don't want you falling down there. I don't think I can recover you very easily if you get down there. Oh, ho, 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 thank you. Come on. Come on. Get in my boat. Get in my boat. You are a mob. You can get in my boat. Get in my boat, chocobo. Get in my chocobo. You're not going to get in my boat, are you? I don't know if it can get in my boat. I might just have to come back when I have, like, a saddle or something. Wait, did I get rid of the bone block? Um, because I've just had a thought. I've just had a thought. I don't know if it's going to work, but we might actually want that wool. Um, okay, so we do this, we do this, and then can I... No. Okay, so you can't undye a wool block here. That kind of... Wait, oh! Yeah, but duh, I need actual dye. <gasps> yes, game changer. Okay, so it kind of sucks that we had to get rid of our super special wool stuff, but I'm okay with this. I'm very okay with this. Um, So we need to do uh this and that because I realized that I forgot, or not that I forgot. Nope, fool. 
Why did I do that? I didn't bring any crafting stuff with me. There we go. So now... Now we can do this. And now we can have... Nope, not that. Eh, we can have... A bed! Yes! We can have a bed! Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh. That's also interesting. Oh! What? Oh, that's very bad. No, that's very bad. Ow. Come on. I think I can get it before it gets me. Yes, it did. Oh, <gasps> Trident! There's no way. Oh. That was a splash thing. That was a splash thing. Oh, and this is also a sack thing. Or rather, that right there is a pouch hole. Yes, I can't believe we've got a trident on freaking day one. What the heck? Three minutes earlier. As much as I would love a trident down the road, I am not concerned with that. My weird precognition strikes again. Oh, very interesting entrance. Are you a dungeon? I get the feeling the answer is yes, because I see red in here. Oh! Whoa. What are you, though? Pyromancer. Oh! You're a person to trade with! You do spells and magic and stuff! Sensei! I'm gonna call you my teacher now. Iron spells and spell books. Cool! Hey, bro, alright, I guess I'm not gonna smack you then. Cool. I wasn't expecting a pyromancer, but I guess that's what we got. Oh, yep, and we've just confirmed that campfires went lit, now do this orangey smoke thing. That's cool. Okay, now I get to find out... Oh, some kind of abandoned... Got it. Well, if I wanted to, I could totally make that pyromancer like my spellcasting teacher or whatever, and then just uh, mark down like this totally abandoned thing next to it. Okay, so I'll keep that in mind. Potentially we come back here and make that wizard our master. In a role-playing sense. Like, I, I don't think you can actually become a, a master's apprentice kind of thing mechanically. I know back in, like, Infinity Evolved Witchery, you could totally do that. So maybe there is some kind of spiritual uh, successor to that kind of mechanic. But I doubt it. So, I have been exploring for around about two hours at this point in time. Actually, it's closer to one and a half. But if we take a look at the journey map, I have discovered a lot of stuff. I discovered two villages at the very least. So we started up here where the boat marker was. I'm going to remove that because it's no longer there. But I remembered that, yes, villages tend to have waystones built into them. So we managed to get just a freestanding waystone out here. That's what Krirak is. Then we have Zurermur, which is a village. Uh, Kromar, uh, Kromarachmid? 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 Hmm. And then we also found a village down here that didn't appear to have a waystone. They're not guaranteed, necessarily, but they tend to show up in villages, so maybe I just need to find that one there. And then, as I was looking around, I was starting to think, okay, I might potentially just make my base down with the Pyromancer to start off with, which is... Where's that Pyromancer? I keep losing them. Here. Yeah. So I was thinking about making my base in the abandoned uh, building next to the Pyromancer's Tower. And then, as I was going along, I happened to see through a crack in the wall, oop, got asleep, and I opened a whole bunch of my quest stuff rewards. So now we have a sleeping bag. My bed is also out because we are technically where my starter base is going to be. Come on. Come on. Like a couple more seconds and then I can sleep. Excellent. Oh. 
Well, okay, I don't know about that. I've learned how to draw a house with chalk. Anyway, so I was just minding my business, boating along here. And then I looked over, and I noticed this. Through a crack in the wall, some very glowy, crystally looking things. And that sealed my fate. That was when I knew this is where I'm going to make my starter base. And I've just gone crazy. I've started planting trees. I've planted some of these saplings that, well, fruit saplings. And a whole bunch of them are already starting to grow up. So we've got a ton of apples. We've got some oranges. I believe we've got lemons and limes and star fruits. And that's not even the limit of all of the fruits that we can possibly have. I've also started growing red maple, orange maple, and these um, silver birch saplings from the Regions Unexplored mod. And that's just so that we can start getting some of these colored leaves as we need them. I think I see some sheepies over there. Anyway, so a lot has happened. Um, wandering trader spawned here. Another one of those rat things spawned while I was trying to sleep. Um, you know, like the plague doctor with the rats on the leads. And it turns out that that is just a wandering trader type thing from the rat mod or whatever. But check this out out. Let me see if I can just parkour around the corner here. Check this out. There's a skeleton below me that I haven't dealt with just yet because I don't have the capacity to, but this place makes its own light. It has a whole bunch of crystals, which just sort of feeds into my own personal lore about being a hard light technomancer, and I think we can turn this into sort of a laboratory. And we'll probably have our more wooden stuff outside, like we usually do, because this is early game and, you know, wood is the easiest resource to come by. But then I'm going to start putting some futuristic-y stuff in here as we get the resources. And then eventually, I think this might potentially be a portal location to where my final base is going to be. And I don't know if that's going to be in another dimension. I don't know if it's going to be in this dimension, but another biome. But we are going for a blend of magic and technology that I hope is going to look really cool. I'm basically just leaning into my personal lore as Agent Omega, and... Ow. I really should deal with you, but I'm not going to. But I just saw this, and I thought it was super pretty, like, great aesthetics, and really just inspired me to build. And unfortunately, I can't really... Ow. I can't really do my usual outro in third person just because the wall is too narrow behind me. So we're just going to do it looking at these crystals. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified. And as always, I'm looking forward to your feedback in the comments below. And with that, I will catch you on the flip side. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now, as always, in the upper left, if this is the current video, is a video that you may like. Otherwise, it is the next video in this series. Lower left is the series playlist, if I've made it yet. This is episode one, after all. And on the right is my icon, by which you can subscribe. Okay, thanks again for watching.